right? I mean, I know our, all of our attention spans are shortened and I'll, I'll circle it back to what my day-to-day -day interactions are, have been with my girls lately, right? My girls will say, daddy, and they'll, she'll ask me a question, right? One of my girls will ask me a certain question about something, right? And I'm not the random fact person, quite frankly, I, I, I really like to just stay in my lane with a lot of things, understand things holistically, but not get into like a whole bunch of different rabbit holes, right? But the reason why I even explain it that way is because my response to them is typically, right, in terms of my messaging is I want to teach you, teach you how to find the information, not to retain it. There's no point in that right now. We don't live in that age, right? It's not sacred. People aren't hiding that from us, generally speaking, right? But if I can point you to a video that shows you how to do that, rather than reading a, a freaking 50-page manual to solve that problem, doesn't that make more sense? I want to be able to reframe and teach them the right skill set. Not that dad knows everything. I'm not Google. I'm not YouTube. Right. But if you know how to use these things and arm yourself with that capacity, you're going to be more efficient in what you want to do. Yeah, I always say that, you know, like you go back in history, you know, you go back a thousand years, but you have YouTube. You're the smartest man in history. That's right. Like literally people would know who you are now because you have the answer to every question of all time. Like it, it's absolutely amazing. And nobody, nobody cares. That's the right. weirdest thing, you know, like. You know, everybody's walking around with a supercomputer in their pocket and it's nothing, you know, we're using it like monkeys to look at, you know, girls and crossovers, you know, <laughs> but, but that's the thing, right? Like at the top of our podcast episode today, right? We were talking about, Hey, some of the things we want to talk about and touch on, uh, during today's like, you know, call or episode are like digital trends. Like what is going on with traditional media? How is AI really affecting or affecting a lot of these uh, industries, you know, and for the subject matter expert that understands how to utilize these systems and sees these trends in their life, you should become more efficient. It should make you a, an asset, not a liability. If you know how to utilize this and incorporate this, in, incorporate this into your skill set, it should be, you, you should be more valuable. You know what I mean? Whatever mm -hmm. it is that you're doing. So kind of along the same lines, one of the things that I just keep thinking about this week, um, you saw Apple launch their, their augmented reality glasses, right? One, I'm, I'm really on the fence of like, I don't think this is good, right? Like literally went from having no cell phones, no computers to the average person is on their cell phone four hours a day. And if you have a job, you're in front of a screen an extra four hours then you're probably going to go home and watch TV, right? Like these are all things that like our brains and bodies were designed for. And now that they're, they're making it immersive, you're now kind of in your cell phone, in your computer, in the other places. I, my initial reaction is to pull back. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you know, the same thing about the cell phone. Everybody thought it was dumb until it made their life easier, until they got you hooked on, on like that, that cyber crack, right? And, you know, like say the NBA, it has the declining numbers in the finals and all that stuff. But you know what? You put on those Apple glasses and you're sitting courtside, you know, if that's at a reasonable price, they're going to set records for the amount of people that are tuning in because it's a better experience. Right. But it wouldn't just be that. Then it's also going to be the, you know, everything else essentially, right? Everything else. It's probably going to be spearheaded by porn. Like to be honest, right? That's how a lot of, that's how VHS got to be a thing. That's how Betamax got to be a thing. DVD. Oh, now we can search chapters. That's what led that revolution, right? And it's probably because we still got our monkey brains. That's what's going to happen with the goggles as well. But I'm thinking about it, just trying to plan out. Like I've been listening to uh, Patrick Bet David his book, Five Moves Ahead. So when you see uh, something that's going to shift an industry, it absolutely is going to shift an industry, the, uh, the AR glasses. What's that going to do to marketing? What's right. that going to do to our position? What's that going to do when combined with all of the AI? And honestly, as much as I try to think about it, like I literally, my best answer is I don't know at this point, you know, because it's like the possibilities are endless. You know, it's like when I first saw ChatGTP six months ago or whatever, eight months ago, mind blowing. And then you give it six, seven, eight months and you see what everybody's doing with it. Oh, wow. You're doing this. You're using it like that. Oh, I didn't even think about it. Oh, now we're on the internet. We're doing this, 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 this. 
10 years from now, man, like, how can I tell my son who's going to be 20 years old? Like, you know, I would actively sit down. I've watched TV for eight hours a day. He's just going to watch super TV. You know, he's just going to be, be on, in like, the show. You could yeah, be, well be in the show. That you're walking into cheers. Hey, Sam, you know, or, or whatever, you know, yeah. like trying to say back to my childhood, like, but like, doesn't that just naturally end up at the matrix? Seems like it. Like, <laughs> I'd be consuming, right? Cause they, but yeah, I think you had um, touched on some very important um, signals, right? Mm -hmm. If the leaders of markets are investing time, money, and attention into something new, there's a sign, right? You put your money where your mouth is. And a lot of these industry leaders think about what Microsoft did when they went all in with integrating uh, open AI, chat GPT with Bing. What did that do with Apple's huge announcement, right? They're not a small, uh, uh, you know, they're not a small tech company, right? Mm -hmm. If they're talking about going into AI, AR and those and VR, right? And they're doing that, they're making strides and Google's doing this as well. These are the biggest players that are in those spaces. But are right. they doing it for the betterment of humanity or to make money? That's a different conversation, right? Well, is it? You know, because like truthfully, like, you know, my, my initial reaction is the pullback because, you know, I'm not a gamer. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I, I deleted all my social media apps, which is, you know, for years, I was like, I can't delete them. I run, a, I run an ad agency. I need them. Yeah, no, turns out you don't need them. Don't need them fucking off. You can just check it on your desktop when you sit down. Yeah. My screen time the ads down. manager and do what you got to do. Yeah, dude, my screen time went down three hours a day. Right. And it's Seems. not that I'm not doing the job. It's just that I'm not, I don't, it's literally made to be addictive. Right. That is the intention, 100%. It's watch literally for everyone watching this, watch Social Dilemma if you haven't on Netflix. Exactly. We talked about but that, right? It's in my head though, where it's like, you know, we're, we've been so deep in the digital thing for a decade mm -hmm. that I've always felt like, oh, I understand what they're doing. And I like I kind of was like on par with it or whatever. But in reality, I've been mainlining it harder than anybody else. You know, I don't know what the heroin analogy. I don't know what that term is. Right. But that's what I've been doing. I've been hooked right the heck up to to whatever it is, you know, right to the, the Facebook newsfeed from the beginning. Yeah. Because I, it is a way that I basically was able to provide for my family and the family of others. So I'm seeing it, but like simultaneously saying this is bad and other people, this is happening to and other people are arguing on Facebook, but I'm falling into maybe not the same trap, just a different trap. Right. And I think that's really where the awareness comes in. And also like being able to um, recognize the trends we might not know where it's going to be, but we know where it's headed, right? So with mm -hmm. it, and if you think about it from a business standpoint too, and just from like, as you're talking about, just a daily life type of a societal standpoint, um, you see that there's going to be talks about, because they don't even know. They, as in terms of our all of our government entities don't even know. I mean, it, the, the country of Italy banned chat GPT because of the, you know privacy issues. So if you think about just that widespread spectrum of where people and and you know, governing bodies or thinking about where things are headed, no one knows yet. But if we're going to capitalize on trends and on shifts, this is going to be by far one of the largest transfer, transfer, transfers of wealth if you pay attention and do something about it. For the people that are thinking that this is going to be a fad, y'all need you should wake up. If you don't, it's okay. But for the people that are, what I'm doubling down on at, at the very first is I'm always asking myself this because you and I had this conversation offline um, probably a couple of weeks ago right? With all of the things that are happening in the world of AI, because that's the most trending topic right now, right? Outside of just other negative news that you get. My question, my ultimate question when I apply that lens has always been, how can I utilize this or these tools to make my job more efficient, faster, profitable, right? So then I can do my job at a higher level. At the very least, that's the ultimate output right now. And if we can do that, it's succeeding in the sense of what it's supposed to do for me now, as we're still trying to ride this wave because we're so early on in it, right? Yeah, it, it really is just like somebody just discovered fire and mm -hmm. they're handing you the stick, right? Hey, man, what are you going to do with this? Dude, I'll ask you this, right? When it comes to, say, building a personal brand, a lot of people that are creators in that space that have done a lot of talking head videos, vertical videos, 
um, are always looking for something new because what they've come accustomed to, a lot of other people are still on the fence with trying to do, right? So now for the people that have never really been all in on putting their face out there and their message out there, right? With the fact that you can basically just clone yourself using like 11 labs and synthesia or whatever that's called, right? You never truly have to ever do it. But you think about the recoil that happens, right? You remember when you got mail was cool mm -hmm. and then it got really damn boring and then lumpy mail came back in style again. What the hell do you think is going to happen with this type of a trend when everyone's going artificial intelligence? Do you think it's going to bounce back and recall to the fact of like people want real live connections, live events, networking with real people, having that actual interaction of building social community? I truly think so. So for me, in terms of thinking about that, where I plant my flag is I'm going to utilize these tools to be able to create more content at scale to effectively build my brand faster but be authentic with it in that standpoint that's why utilizing the concept of a second brain utilizing ai but being able to be conscious of where you want to take where you want it to take you is going to be pretty powerful because how else are you going to freaking know you got there or not if you don't establish that type of a goal or a vision for what you're doing with these tools and what's going on today yeah i think more than ever the ability to think several moves ahead is like it's, it's absolutely key because honestly if i'm just using AI to make more blog posts, there's going to be a billion extra blog posts on the right. on the web by next year. You know, like whatever the number is, it's staggering. You know, it's like something like every year they make more pictures than were created in the entire history of human history. Every year they double that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not going to go down now that it doesn't even have to be real people anymore. You know, like you said, and, and there is going to be a recoil and maybe the in-person stuff is going to be the premium in a while. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's pretty kind of crazy where you're going, but like, I know Amazon is talking about basically when you're on prime, you're going to be able to watch a video and everything in the background, you can actually point and click on and buy that directly on Amazon. So it's like the level of just like built in ads, it just, there's no more waiting. There's no more anything, but the things that we are missing i think is like sunshine and and hard work and all of a sudden i'm like 80 years old saying that kind of stuff but it's real you know what i mean and i don't mean hard work i work as hard as anybody who's ever been in my family before except before they were farmers you know before yeah. they spend the, the day in the field they get it there's actual vegetables to show all that kind of stuff so i know that got a little bit off topic right there but it is just mind blowing for like, you know what I mean? Like, wait, well, you need to pick a destination. Like you said, it's a tool. How do you actually get there? And then there's so many ways to help achieve that. Like, for example, this podcast, the way that we're doing it, where it's a one hour episode from Zoom, Zoom is up their stuff where it will break it into smaller chunks for us. And then we use another AI program, Opus, to actually put out the smaller clips. That's something that like literally a year ago is a full-time, not a full-time, but you know, it's a video editor and 10, 15 hours of work. You know, Dude, I'm seeing this. I had this conversation earlier this week on a workshop that I was attending, right? All creators on that space and the, the spectrum of how many um, short form video services, productized services that are out there is staggering in even the price range of it. Right. And again, it goes back to me seeing this, right? It's anywhere ranging from when Opus was free in beta all the way to like these bigger creators now creating a done for you type of an ad, ad agency to do that stuff for you, where like, you know, 15 clips for some of these agencies are charging seven grand a month for. I'm pretty sure it's a price anchoring play. But if you think about that, right, there's so much opportunity there. Again, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't understand the destination, how are you going to be able to choose from an Opus or a video.ai? or my Descript, or like one of these premium services, right? You wouldn't. And then how do you then justify the justify to yourself the pricing of it if you don't have a game plan for using these things? Hmm. Sorry, you got me. I'm actually really trying to take that in because there is a lot there. And, and in theory, all of the programs are basically the same, but they always have like one differentiating factor where it's like, there's no reason in theory that I'd want to pay $150 a month for this or seven thousand dollars a month for this versus something that could be done for free right unless you think that 
that 7,000 is going to actually make me 70,000. So is that just a clearer defined roadmap or is that a significantly better program? Like, I think the argument is just a tool is a tool. It's about, it always goes back to the skill set of the user, right? And the output that you want, mm. right? Again, we've talked about this. And if you think about it just from the level of, okay, um, given all things being equal, if we were all given the same tools, but one person came into that competition, if you will, with the skill set that they currently have, and the other person was a newbie, who do you think is going to win? The person with the skill. Every time. Tool is a tool, right? That's all it is. It was just like more of how are you going to utilize that to make your output better, whether it's faster, more creative, more efficient, whatever it is. At what point is the tool going to start using us? Or is it? Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it feeds on itself because it's, it's artificial intelligence, right? It's learning as we're using it. So the more inputs, the better it's going to iterate to where the point, to the point of where like the human condition, we get tired, we get hungry, we have emotions, we have vices. AI doesn't. Mm -hmm. you know? And if you think about it, it's already using us, right? Like it's literally using us to get better until it's a point where maybe it doesn't need us anymore to do whatever task it is, you know, it still might be a tool, but it'll be a self hammering hammer or something, you know? Right, right, exactly, exactly. 